Hello, sir. Hello. How are you doing today? Good. Good. I stopped you. Your registration's out by just over a year, year oh, and a half. I was actually on my way to get it done right now. Yeah, oh, I was, right. was going to do it. Is that what you're doing? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. surprising. What yeah. about the whole two years you've almost had to get it done? Oh, uh, this isn't my car. Um, so I was just helping a friend out. Okay. Yeah. Whose car is it? My sister. Is that a Gatling gun? What? It's in the back seat. Not that I know of. No, I don't. This is my. This isn't my car. Mm -mm. I don't. Oh, I didn't even know that was there. Whose car is this? It's my dad's it's sister's. Dad. What about the one right next to your knee? That is my friend uh, Jimbo's. Yeah, it's. I think he just leaves that here sometimes when he rides in my sister's car. I don't know. I, it's not mine. I don't know anything about it. Do you have your, your driver's license or ID card? Uh, I actually do not need it. Why is that? Uh, I'm actually a sovereign citizen. Okay. And then I also noticed that you have a pistol tech in your waistband. Do you have a permit or a license for that? Not my pants. Get out. What seems to be the problem, officer? Welcome to Demolition Ranch. I am joined by Officer Zach Owens. What's up, dude? Hey, what's up, man? How you doing today? Doing good. Good. Zach is a police officer in Midland, Midland, Texas. The Midland PD, right? Yes. Get that right? And I first met Zach a couple years ago. He came out to Demolition Day. We just had a meet and greet, and he was one of the attendees at the meet and greet, and he had a Demolition shirt on, and we took some pictures, and that was where our story stopped for a while. But then, um, how long ago was that? It was August 31st, 2018. So, August, you were involved in a pretty crazy situation. Yeah, an active shooter. An active shooter in Midland, Odessa, which is over in West Texas. And I got an email a few days later from a guy who was one of your good buddies. Mm -hmm. And he told me that you were involved in that shooting. You were actually shot in that shooting in the line of duty. And you were up in a hospital. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, you know, Zach's a big fan of the channel, and I think he'd lift his spirits. And so I, the next day, jumped in a car and drove out to Midland, saw you in a hospital, and that's where our story kind of picked up again. You basically were just on a normal, normal day, patrolling around, and you get some calls come in saying there is an active shooter. He was, he was just waiting, you know, waiting to shoot more people. And uh, He was in his car, or in a car. He was in a car, yes. And uh, we... Locked eyes, and at that point we started shooting at one another, and uh, he sped off towards more people, and thankfully for other officers in the area, uh, they, they were able to stop him from causing any more harm to anyone else. Yeah, I, was, I heard it was about a minute after he saw you that he was totally stopped. Yes. And so you actually took some damage during this firefight yes. as well. Yes. What happened there? Well, I think the worst of it for most people would say uh, losing an eye, my left eye, it's a prosthetic eye. Which is crazy because so, it looks super real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, so I knew he lost his eye. Um, after I left the hospital, I stayed in touch and they told me like he did lose his eye. Um, but then he showed up today and I was like, uh, your eye looks super, mm -hmm. I would never know. Yeah. Which is so pretty awesome. Prosthetic eye, they, they do amazing things. Yeah. You know, I went to uh, flying from Texas to Alabama. I went to Cox Ocular and they, she did it all by hand. I mean, it's beautiful. That's it's beautiful crazy. Work, so, and no, most people don't even know it's not. No, right. no one would ever know. So, yeah, uh, took took a round to the hand. Wore an external fixator for too long. Yeah, uh, that was annoying. <laughs> yeah, um, I bet. And then then one to the arm. But Jeez. Other than that, I've healed up and I feel great. Yep. Uh, all the support from everybody has been wonderful. Yeah. So, uh, I can't thank thank everybody enough. You know. Um, just the outreach from all over the world, people supporting police, and it means a lot. Super cool to see how many people, even just when I was there that one day at the hospital, mm -hmm. how many people came to see you off, like it was so cool. It was amazing, the turnout was amazing, and the support, I can't, that's lifting my spirits. Yeah. That's what helped me to recover so quickly. Um, it's still a long road ahead, but it, I can't tell you, everybody, how much I appreciate it. Yeah, so. and so I told Zach that when he gets all healed up, we need to have him out for a demolition ranch day. And we're doing it today. 
In 1909, my grandfather opened a candy shop with all the money he had, and he spent the very last of that money, $14, on this cash register for his candy shop. And it's been in our family for 110 years. It's been sitting at my grandma's house, and she has dementia now, so I went in and stole it. Love you, Mima. She didn't even notice. <laughs> I'm just kidding, we bought it off Craigslist yesterday, and I was kind of worried that it was gonna be some like antique relic, and it is, but it's not worth much. We looked it up, I was like, if it's worth like 5,000 bucks, man, I'm just gonna sell it. We looked it up, it's worth like $80. So we have this old National Cash Register Co. It's locked up tight. Hold on, this is open, and there's a key in here, but it won't turn, and so we cannot actually get the drawer open. We're gonna start with a 22 long rifle. I'm gonna say there's zero dollars in it. I just, there's just no way. We, we could be that lucky. We'll yeah. find out though. Oh, that gun's so dirty. <laughs> he just dropped it and it was like eh. <laughs> Oh, he cracked it. Still got metal holding it in. Next up is a nine millimeter, but this is out of a brand new gun. This is a Kalishnikov USA KP9. You can tell it looks kind of like an AK-47. It is built very similarly with similar controls. We have a regular AK style safety over here. This is actually considered a pistol because it has such a short barrel and it has a collapsible stock, I mean a foldable stock. So we are going to go ahead and, I've actually never fired this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a, maybe a couple rounds at some other targets, and then one at the cash register. I also put a Vortex Razor red dot on top of it. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and put one in the register. I'm gonna aim for the drawer as well. Good hit. Let's check it out. <laughs> it's already open. <laughs> How did that do that? Wait. All right, we'll split what's in here, okay, Zach? <laughs> uh, you can have this, I think it's a button. button. <laughs> Dibs on this, and uh, which right. one of these do you want? I'll take the washer. Oh, oh. yeah, I'll take the lock you washer. You can have the Thanks. lock washer. There's a bullet. You know, we made away with a lot. There's our nine millimeter smash right there. So, looks like uh, they, they build them better than they used to, actually. <laughs> I always actually um, fear this in a video where we expect it to last a long time and then it, it's like done in two shots. That's what she said. I just locked. <laughs> Curiously, two keyholes right here. No idea why. There is a key right here and this, I don't know what this thing does, but it says key lock. It does? Yeah, key lock. This thing's this thing's just got mysteries all over it. So we're gonna go ahead and try to open the rest of this thing up. And there's gotta be something we're not seeing here because, you know, I think they usually, this is just the dummy drawer. This is where the bad guys think the money is, but it never is there. The big bills are all up here somewhere. This is the Black Aces Tactical Pro Series Bullpup, a 12 gauge shotgun bullpup configuration mag fed. It's awesome, and I want to show first the PL Pro. This is from Olight, and this episode is sponsored by Olight. What I like about them is their charge ports are magnetic, so it's super easy to charge them. 1500 lumens. Zach, how bright is this? I, I can't see it, dude. It seems really bright to me. It's not my real eye. Oh. <laughs> we have a special offer in the description below for you guys on Olights this Christmas. Zach, would you like to be the first to shoot this thing? Yes, I would. All right, where'd the mag go? You have it, perfect. That worked out. We put a vortex red dot on top of this thing as well. <laughs> that probably did nothing. It pushed it in though. It did bend it in. Look at that. Dude. Well, we have more powerful rounds. We have some buckshot. Let's try that. High brass, double lock, buckshot. Smacked it pretty good. So that one went straight through. This one stopped on it. And there's our BB. Huh. And then these went through the wood a little low. Well, um, what if we just 
shot fire at it. Dragon's breath. I think they just put like shavings of magnesium, like little chunks of magnesium. When it fires out, it lights on fire. I've actually made some of these rounds before. I've never shot like actual. I definitely get hit with things. Nothing. Nothing at all. It That's looked cool. cool. <laughs> it looked real cool. We need more penetration. And so Zach actually brought his Dimbo Ranch AR. This is the very first one that ever came off the line. This is serial number one of the Dimbo Ranch ARs. And so I haven't even shot this thing. We're going to shoot that downrange, but I really wish we had one more AR to shoot some of that 5.56 ammo downrange. Oh wait! We do. But Matt, that's just a tiny little pack. How can you have an AR in there? Well, my friends, this is a Gen 3 Fold AR. This <laughs> AR, as you can see, folds in thirds. So the barrel folds around like so. And then it has a Deadfoot Arms folder on the back as well. So the buffer tube folds around and you open it up and you have an AR-15 that fits in a handy dandy little tiny package. This has a Vortex Viper red dot and uh, we're ready to fire. Ready? Ready. Let's do it. Hope I didn't shoot the money. There's probably a lot in there. We hit it a lot. Is that dust or smoke? <laughs> Why is this burning right now? Why is the glass still intact? Why How is the glass that? still intact? Okay. The thing is, like, we're trying to open this, and we don't even know what opens. Oh. Oh. Nope. Oh, God, it stinks. Oh, it's loose. Oh. Come on. It's so close. It smells like old people. Zach just noticed that nothing went through the back. <laughs> shot all over. That's super surprising. We shot this thing with like 20 rounds of 5.56 and I they missed one. <laughs> and they all stopped inside of it. Got a new Henry. So this is a 4570. I actually have a gun that looks very similar to this, but this is their brand new one that has a side gate on it. So you actually can load it here. Typical Henry's you load up here like that and you have to load everything all at once. This one, in between firing a couple rounds, I can stick another round in there if I want. And so, very cool feature to now have the side loading gates on a Henry 4570. All right, these are the extreme penetrator rounds. Uh, they're a solid brass bullet going super fast and very powerful. You will notice a big fireball coming out of this gun. I'm gonna try to shoot uh, three of them and be a man so that Zach thinks I'm cool. <laughs> oh, shoot, man. Ah, one's good. <laughs> this has no butt pad also. Nope. That is a solid brass plate that's slamming into my shoulder. Ah! Oh. You can do it. Just two more. Jeez. Ah. It's just not bad. <laughs> not bad at all. All right. Last one. It even hurts just when I put it back up here. It's already bruised. I can feel it. Oh. Jeez, man. Ah. How do you feel, Matt? Ah. It actually really does hurt. So that's 4570. That's 45. Yeah, that's 4570. And that's 4570. Pretty locked down. Oh, how the heck? Dude, what is in this that makes a 4570 extreme penetrator, three of them, not go through? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Keep going. Oh. Money? 
No. Oh, that's why it was stopping. Yep. All these are solid metal rods and they're all stacked and our bolts are hitting all those. This tumbler is solid metal. Crazy. So this is this is an old school adding machine, right? I mean, that's what right. it's doing as you type in these things. These all have numbers on them back when it was new. And as you typed them in, it would add up your purchase. Dude, it is just, that's why it's so heavy too. It's just full of metal. This is a computer, kids. Back from grandpa's day. <laughs> these are patents. 1910, 1915, 1915, 1920. In Canada, they have some other patents pending, so there's probably some good stuff coming from this company. <laughs> Here's a penetrator bullet. That is a 4570. Definitely smashed through some stuff. And you can actually see where it went through here because you can see brass on these metal pieces there. <laughs> uh, turns out these things are very bulletproof up here and very hard to open up here, so they don't want you seeing all the hardware in here. But it's very easy to actually get the drawers open. Just one little nine millimeter right in the front, pops out and lets you have everything. Zach, glad to see you doing well. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, for sure, thanks for coming and hope to see you out on the streets again soon, doing what you do. Yeah, man. Appreciate you. Yeah, man. I'm actually going to put this thing on Antiques Roadshow. My Meemaw said that as long as the glass is good, it's still worth some money. Yeah, or not. Contact. That's a great idea. <laughs> what about the quad hop? Uh, don't move, don't move. Bobby. I'm a doctor. Ish.